You know, there, there's no way to spin this. I really don't like certain aspects and certain things about the NBA. I really don't. I hate how some of these guys will just jump to other teams in pursuit of a championship. Like, if you look at the Montrezl Harrell uh, jumping from the Clippers to the Lakers. Like, why would you do that? You take a two-year deal with an option in the second year, which basically means that you're going for one year because you want to take the easy way out to try and win a championship with LeBron and AD. On the one hand, it's the rights that they have to do. It's their personal decision. They're exercising their leverage that they have. I can't hate on that. I can just hate what it represents and hate what it means. You know, like, nobody nobody has any toughness anymore. Everybody's willing to jump and bail and make LeBron's job easier. It kind of makes you want to fop a little bit. But uh, with that said, part of the point of bringing that up is, is you feel like you'll have a couple select teams every year in the NBA that really matter. And then everybody else basically doesn't. And you could certainly say in recent years, the Charlotte Hornets have been in that bucket of teams that don't matter, which is crazy when you think about Michael Jordan is the owner of the team, the greatest player in NBA history, the icon of icons when it comes to the sport of basketball, is associated with your franchise, owns the franchise, runs the franchise, and yet, relatively consistently, your franchise is largely a laughing stock and a joke. They're not 80, 90s, Clippers level, batter joke, but they're a pretty big joke nonetheless. And what that means is for teams like that, you've really got to hit on the draft and you really got to hit on the personnel decisions that you make. You sometimes may have to overpay for guys to come in via free agency. You're going to have to acquire guys via trade market. Like, you got to be crafty, creative. Doesn't mean that you can't make big things happen. Like for years, the Warriors were largely a nothing. And you know, they're playing in the Bay Area, San Francisco, Oakland. That's not Los Angeles. That's not Chicago. That's not New York. You know, it's not even like a Houston or a Dallas or somewhere like that. Like it's a secondary market. But they hit it right in the draft with guys like Steph and Clay and Draymond and by doing that in part, it allowed them the flexibility after they had already won a championship and had a 73-win season to have enough cap space to be able to bring in a Kevin Durant so they could chase more championships. Like The one thing I want to emphasize is just because you're in a certain market or a certain place in no way, shape, or form is an excuse for you not to be able to contend and potentially win championships. It might be more difficult. You might have to have more things go right. But it absolutely 100% can be done. And the Warriors have proven that. The Raptors just won the championship last year. They're in freaking Canada, for God's sakes. I know Toronto's a great city and all, but it's still Toronto. And they just won a ring. So I think market size and this and that, especially when you have somebody like Michael Jordan as your owner, well, that's not really a good thing. Because while he was a Michael Jordan, a Michael Jordan, when it comes to basketball players, it's absolutely fair to say that he's the, the Michael Jordan of bad owners. He's just bad. He's just bad. And it's like every time you think the Hornets may be able to potentially turn a corner, like, hey, you're in a position to get LaBella Ball to draft, drop to you third overall in the draft. Now, there is certainly huge risk with him, and he has huge bust potential, but he also has huge boom potential. He has... Franchise altering, franchise changing, megastar box office potential for that organization. And to be able to get him to fall to you third overall, you're sitting there if you're a Hornets fan and say, God damn, you know what? It's okay that we didn't give Kemba Walker the Supermax and keep him. It's okay that we sent him off to Boston. It's okay we got Terry Rozier in return because we got LaMelo. And everything is going to be mellow yellow from here on out. Until you get to the realization that Michael Jordan is still the owner of your team. And the only yellow sensation you're getting is the yellow that seems to constantly be streaming down your back so you're getting pissed all over by one of the worst decision makers in basketball. I hope you understand this. You're more than one player away. You're more than two players away. You've been in a space the past couple of years where you've been Underneath a really bad Nicholas Batum contract, just like a pretty bad Terry Rozier contract. Who the hell else am I forgetting? Just like, is it Cody Zeller? That's a bad contract, if I'm not mistaken. 
And I'm probably leaving somebody else out too. Like there are multiple just bad contracts in the NBA, and I realize that's part of the deal of life in the NBA is that you're going to have some bad contracts on your team. But my God, you've been overpaying several guys by significant margins for very little return coming back to you. And as I, you're on the precipice of one more year, you can finally 100% be clear of that really bad Nicholas Batum contract where he signed it and he basically disappeared. It's like he doesn't freaking exist, even though you're paying him. 20 plus million in this case, I believe this upcoming season, he'd be on the books for 27 million. You're sitting there thinking, hey, you can either trade him to somebody that wants an expiring contract and maybe get some type of pick and return or do something to create some long term flexibility for this organization. Hornets fans, whoever there is that actually exists that claims to be a Hornets fan, probably an public, and I don't know why, just as you're on the precipice of the dawn of a new era, the LaMelo Ball era. The we're not going to give stupid contracts to guys that disappear like Nicholas Batum. Lo and behold, don't you know, apparently Michael Jordan watched the playoffs this year, took one look at the Celtics and said, you know what? I want to pay the white guy $30 million plus a year. Because somehow you watched Gordon Hayward in Boston the past couple of seasons, and you said to yourself, you wanted a piece of this action? Like, think about how crazy it is. Just a few weeks ago, most all of us were assuming that Gordon Hayward was most likely going to opt into the last year of his deal because who the hell else would want to sit there and pay him even close to that much money for any length of time of years? He's going to ride out that last year in Boston, close to $30 million, Try to pump up his stock and potentially get one last big contract in the open market in another year. But instead, Gordon Hayward was able to ride two underwhelming seasons in Boston, coming back from the injury, mind you, but the last two underwhelming seasons in Boston, missing notable stretches of games due to injury, just underperforming, poor fit, and everything else, in a pandemic state where COVID has wreaked significant impacts on the league, potentially could create significant salary cap constraints, and was able somehow to extort the freaking Charlotte Hornets out of 120 plus million guaranteed dollars. And it's not just like it's two years with a couple of options. You're talking about 100% tried and true Carolina Blue guaranteed damn money. Is wrong with the Hornets? What the hell is Mike smoking? It's almost like he sat there and said, hey, people are starting to praise me and the things I'm doing with this organization. And I took that personally. So let me go ahead and ridiculously overpay for God blessed Gordon freaking Hayward. And I realize when you were in Charlotte, you might have to overpay for some guy. I realize that you're not going to be a marquee free agent destination. I also understand that you want to have some help potentially around your young point guard franchise guy in LaMelo Ball. I get all of that. But I'm sorry. Gordon Hayward ain't it. Like I saw Christian Wood, I think, got 41 over 3 from the Houston Rockets. I'd much rather give Christian Wood... 41 over 3 and bring in another guy at a similar level of money and feel like I got a lot more bang for my buck, a lot more money's worth than the hell that I would have gotten out of having Gordon Hayward under contract until he turns damn, what, 35? What's the vision here? You're almost done with the Batum contract and instead what happens, you bring in Gordon Hayward and clearly, apparently, didn't have anything lined up for Batum because the last reports I saw is that you're going to have to wave Batum and take that $27 million and you're going to have to disperse it over several years. So not only, not only are you not out of the woods when it comes to bad contracts, you've added an even worse one for even a longer period of time and now you're taking the stake of the Nicholas Batum contract and spreading it not just for this year, but over several years to come. Like, who the hell thinks this is a good idea? You know, I think the Charlotte Hornets are the kings of or being the nine seed in the freaking Eastern Conference. 
which is close and just not good enough. Like, you should be trying to build a team to win a championship. And instead it feels like you're building the team to be a seventh seed. Like, that's just crazy. And I realize that Mike is far from the only idiot in the NBA because the league is run by a bunch of them. And you see all these contracts given out. Now, year after year, teams are up against the cap and they're over the cap and they wonder why. Well, it's because you gave Dumb Dick D way too much or way too freaking many. That's why. It's horrible. These teams just can't control themselves. These teams just can't help themselves. Like, did you feel that much pressure to get Gordon Hayward that you were willing to commit almost a half decade's worth of 30 plus mil per year when you don't know what the hell the cap situation is going to look like in future years? Man, Mike, you crazy!